Welcome back to Owlscary for part two of Summer Escape. This is something a bit different for Rory on air, but I hope you're enjoying the variety while many of us are still unable to fly. Don't forget to subscribe, and I really appreciate your likes, shares and comments. My parents look after a flock of around 600 North Ronaldsey rare breed sheep here on the island. They all need to be clipped every year and doing the work by hand makes for a relatively stress-free experience for the sheep. This guy is obviously feeling pretty pumped after his trip to the barbers and fancied showing off to the girls. We've all been there. My wife Lizzie is keen to help, so Mum guides her through the process. Try her like that if you can yeah. do it with her on that side, because she's wanting to go that side. It takes time to build the confidence and skills to clip quickly and accurately, making sure you take the fleece off the sheep in one go without hurting them or yourself with the sharp shears. Right, now, mm. the next thing you do is you'd open up her neck, but nicely for you, nature's done well, that. Yeah, thanks, nature. So the next thing to do is to get your right foot under yeah. here. Right foot under there. Yeah. Right. Sit her up. Yeah because the next thing you need to do is cut from right to left to the spine. You can feel the spine there. And this is where you put the, you put the head through your legs? Um, well... Sometimes. And then you just do right to left? Yeah, right to left until you're at the spine, and then one tiny bit over the spine is usual. Good, that's, that's good. That's... Now, feel the spine before you do any more. You can feel it there. Mm -hmm. And you can feel you're not up to it yet. You've yeah. got so I would take I would take a swathe right right there. Okay. That's good. It looks so easy. Even more so actually. <laughs> nice and neat. Very neat. I mean it can be and like not a small sheep either. Four no. times longer than all of you guys, but Well we all have to start somewhere. That is true. Yeah. The fleeces are rolled up and sorted into matching colours, ready to be shipped off to mainland Scotland to be washed and spun. Mum will then turn the yarn and wool into many things like knitting kits and throws, which she sells on her website, isleofowlscary.com. Her and Dad are very keen to preserve as many links back to the island as they can, so any additional colours are inspired by those found in the natural surroundings of the island. Job done. <laughs> We've got guests arriving later. My in-laws who live on the Orkney mainland are coming to stay for the weekend. So with the clipping done for the day, we drive home via our freshwater spring. Rain is filtered through the rock and collects in this brick reservoir on the side of the cliff. When it's full, we pump it to the surface where it's stored in this tank until we need it for drinking. This is the Ouskerry equivalent of popping into the supermarket on your way home from work to pick up some bits.
There's always one amber gambler happy to make a mad dash for the gateway. With her parents now not due to arrive until the evening, Lizzie and I decided to try a bit of fishing after a quick inspection of the runway. What do you think of the runway conditions then, Lizzie? It's quite good today, I'd say. A uh, few bumps, a um, couple of obstacles, a few sheep in there, but I'd say given the wind conditions, probably using 2-0 today. I love the sound of the gulls and the sea lapping and gurgling in the gaps in the rock while I'm fishing. I know I'm not likely to put Robson Green out of a job anytime soon, but this is really good fun nonetheless. Brought out here from the mainland by our friend Richard, Jill and Nigel made it to the island in time to catch the sunset. Lizzie and I are out for a bit of a island watching walk with um, Lizzie's parents. Luckily the sun's out so it's a good uh, good island experience today. <laughs> this showcase of what it's like when it's nice weather. Not so bad than it could be when it's blowing a gale and pouring with rain, which it has been a bit, but <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Today is a nice day. We're on the southeast side of Ausco now and all the rocks are quite sloping like this into the water which is good because when we get really big storms that have come across the North Sea they uh, roll, their big roll away right up here. These are pretty gentle ones today but normally they're as much as maybe 30 or 40 feet and they roll right up on the shore and then just slide back down again and the rock is very hard so luckily it um, has stood the test of time, otherwise I think the island might have been washed away by now. Believe it or not, this is actually an old church behind me, or as they call it in Orkney, a kirk. And I was actually baptised here by a legit minister. Mad. Are you guys 
straight to the house from here. Yeah. I'll walk fast. Alright. Bye. Bye. Uh, Lizzie hasn't had any time on her own, so she's decided to go off for a walk by herself. So I'm just going to head home with my in laws and my mum. Lucky me. How was your time on your own then? Yeah. Zoomed up, caught you up, told you it would. Because <laughs> you're fitter than me. By quite a lot to be fair. <laughs> Called exercise or and, and you knew it was lunchtime as well. And I knew it was lunchtime, so that extra stuff. Mum's on. made home bakes. Good day. Tunes at sea. Just waiting for Dad to uh, get off the telephone so that we can go out in the boat. Might see if we can catch a fish. We've got a 15 horsepower outboard motor here. I'm gonna fire that up shortly. A bit of Cheryl Crow on. And in here we've got one set of fishing gear that there, some lures on it. An old cut off Persil container that we use for uh, scooping the water out of the boat. Up. Made a little hole in the boat there, so we've got a patch on it. Got an old boiler suit there just for uh, mopping up any muck. And a lovely wife Hi. who's in charge of ropes. Yeah, I know my place. Yeah, not bad, is it? I've never had so many puffins fly straight at the boat like that before. Very cool. We then took a journey along the cliffs on the west side of the island to look at the seabirds and caves before trying for a fish near the lighthouse. After putting everyone else ashore, Lizzie and I secure the dinghy back to her mooring. Good job we got work for the muscles, eh? Yeah. Round the tree, yeah. Back uh, up. Yeah. Now back down through the hole. That looks more like it. Through this bit. Yeah, down pull down now, yeah, that's it. That looks better. Boom. Right now it's you just want to pull on that piece. This bit. Put all your strain on that. That's good. It's a, it's a big pull but it'll go, that's it. Keep going, keep going, that's it. Perfect. Now let it fall the other way. What? Yeah, this it, one. Yeah, let, let it go that the top of the engine here, that's it. And then this, the handle goes down and that wedges it. Like that. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Don't need you anymore. Good work. Yay, don't fall in the water. <laughs> Bye, boat. See me rowing, 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 rowing. Oh. <laughs> Up the beach. No, you can get out now. I want to go there, please. Oh. 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 No, 
Now I need to gut our one and only fish. Look at that. Hello, where are you? I was only out for a walk. Next time on the final edition of Summer Escape, we check our creels to see what we've caught. We say goodbye to one of the island's longest serving machines and take a closer look at the puffin colony that flew over us in the boat. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and leave a comment and I'll see you next time. Cheerio!